Wednesday, April 17th, market analysis, Stan Ehrlich. A little late, 10 o'clock and nine minutes in California. We have another set of new lows for the stock market indexes. Now, today's low on the E-mini, we haven't seen since February 21. Uh, taking out that low, which happens to be the beginning of my first modest layer of support. And I do think there's a good chance of bouncing off of that. And it could be very soon. Uh, today, this week, probably will be oversold if we go straight down like we are doing at the moment. But that's no guarantee it'll be in the next day or two. <clears throat> but we still have the momentum, apparently. So minor bounces like we're having at the moment. Looking at the one-minute chart. <clears throat> Uh, and this is a 15-minute chart, sorry. Way low, almost as low as all the way over here, the other side of the chart. Uh, like I said, you know, 21st of February, I believe. The point is, these sharp breaks like we're having right now, or maybe it's finished, do this, and it could take a day or two. And that was a day and a half. So we're now maybe close to the low of, and I could see some more, another sharp break. But on the daily chart again, I don't have any really decent reason to believe it's going to bounce until I get down to 5,023 on the March, uh, sorry, Juni Mini. And let's go to the spider. Essentially the same kind of commentary, although there's a gap that's being closed finally. Uh, in the spider, that is at four four ninety seven and a quarter, and our low today is already around four ninety nines, and so super close. I think it could happen today, uh, this week. That's another reason to believe maybe the spider, which is already oversold, will bounce around the same point in time. Yeah, kind of fits. But nothing good except for 477 I've been talking about for weeks. That's the real, the trading range between the middle of December and about the middle of January support area that is also in a Fibonacci retracement zone. Uh, actually, I think two, but I don't recall. I had that on the screen for a few days, a couple of weeks ago. Probably should put it back up and uh, oversold right now today for the first day. So in a little bit of support, ah, I mean the gap closer area. Okay, next chart. Next, uh, the spider one minute, and it is a one minute. Uh, just straight down, somewhat like a channel today, Contin <laughs> continuing straight down, and I don't see it breaking any rules. So the next 30 minutes, maybe new lows. Next chart is the QQQ. Here is something very interesting. This is the first time and I'm just showing you guys this. Uh, I didn't see it until this morning. Uh, it's like my copper blindness. I didn't see that bottom formation until it was a little too late. Anyway, <clears throat> you take the top of the QQQ and it was on March 21st and you go to the left. You see a rally high. You go to the right exactly the same number of days. And you see sort of a rally high. It's not sticking up a little bit more like a sore thumb like on the left side, but eh, give me a break. Now, another few days later, exactly the same number of days after this rally high on the left, deck down on that side, you've got another turning point of sorts a little rally high. This is a large, well, not really large. I would call it medium to small, airing on the small side, apparently six weeks, head and shoulder top. And I love them. They're my favorite pattern. I didn't see this one either. That's crazy. Here's the neckline. It works perfectly. You draw it across that low, which is the lowest low after the shoulder, which is the same day. Then it floated upwards, and that's just part of the shoulder. Like on the left-hand side also, 
same thing. Dropped for a couple of days, broke the little black line I've got here, the small dotted yellow line I wiggled during the day on the 15th. Closed really badly, lower than all the lows for about two, three weeks. Breakout day, classic. I saw that in reference to the support line. I drew it at the lowest low for the whole sideways stuff I was looking at, not realizing it was a head and shoulder. And yesterday, follow through to a modest extent, getting close to oversold today. Boom, another down day. And the minimum downside objective on the head and shoulder top, which broke out again two days ago, is... 42075. Guess what? I've had a line at 42137, give or take a tick or two, 45 maybe, in the 75 cent zone there for a long time. So my minimum downside objective on the head and shoulder top is almost exactly another support area I pointed out beforehand. We're going to get there real quickly and going to get more oversold and not yet even oversold for the QQQs, but the other ones are. So that supports another day or two i think of weakness next chart uh qqq going down next chart nasdaq going down the nasdaq daily data chart has now made the lower low just in the last hour or two uh it looks like by a hair so that is really a little support line i should have had there all the way across i'll draw it in now and we're bouncing off of it for the moment there is that same pattern approximately in the NASDAQ as you would expect. That's the June futures, the pattern, the QQQ. And if I drew the neckline, you've got the same line, you've got the same breakout. So my objective has got to be somewhere probably close to the line I drew a long time ago, this one, 17,466. Next chart. The um, one minute on the NASDAQ. Nice bounce, but that's about it. We did it already this morning. We did a bigger one last night. Next chart. Now, the bonds. Well, I'm sorry. The um, NASDAQ futures daily June in the processing. Russell, doggone it, getting mixed up here, is way into new low ground all the way back to one January 18th. But a little bit lower than today's low, which is about the same as yesterday's low. We're going to hit that low on January 18, right there. Now, that's a reason to bounce. We're oversold. But it has to go down a little bit more. Supports another day or two of weakness, I hope. X, next chart. The bonds. They're actually up today a little, 25 uh stock market doesn't care but i have no change of opinion i'm trying to justify a minor low here it didn't hold its support it didn't hold at the bottom of the channel but here we are trading at the high of the day back in the channel back in what was support and might still be but i got to consider resistance so at this point if it stops rallying and drops to new lows right away in a day or two or three wow that's kind of bearish, actually. The channel doesn't work, you know, doesn't hold anymore. Normally, they turn out to be bullish, and this turns out to be bearish. Uh, and it was going down to begin with. Um, so I'm thinking it's trying to bottom out still. But I need another push of strength. Notes. Pretty much the same comment. Oversold, around oversold territory. No bullish engulfing yet, either. Um, we got higher than yesterday's high. Uh, no particular profound support area I can think of here at yesterday, today's low and or uh, Monday's low either. No. So trying to turn bullish, not getting a signal. Uh, crude. Well, the little double top, um, I guess they call them a rice paddy hat or something like that. Sandpan hat, Chinese hat, uh, was and now is pretty convincingly the double top. We have now broken and stayed below, point blank, the lows and the lowest lows since the double top, including that one two days ago. So we're way down here. 
how much lower can we go? Frankly, this is such a big down day that the typical measurement between the highest highs and the lowest low between those two would be the depth of the formation goes only down to, frankly, about where we are or you know, a hair lower. I probably should put a little quickie in here and good and drag it to the breakout, which was probably right there. Yep, yep, we don't have far to go to the minimum objective on the tiny pattern, it's no big deal. I think it's gonna go lower than that. 76.40 is my call. Next, natural gas. Boy, this market is on its way down still. Last couple of days, new lows for the trend. Don't see anything at the moment that causes me to scream bloody murder by it. Um, close to oversold, but bear markets hit oversold, bounce, the reverse of a you know, bull market hanging over bought and then slipping down a little. Then bear market make a new low, oversold. Bounces don't work, they don't rally, they don't go very far, new lows. And that's what we got is new lows, last two days. So bear market looking for new lows, heating oil. Breaking down substantially today, all of a sudden getting close to oversold and all of a sudden getting down to that support area. I think it's gonna sink a little lower into the support area maybe also get oversold and then try to turn up. But here's the important part. If we don't hold pretty quickly in this green support area where we've tried to hold since February 2nd and successfully on several attempts and start closing below 2.5466 thereabouts, obviously this low on February 21, that's it. It's probably gonna hit a new low below 2.3, next chart. Uh, do we have a top in gold or not? Eh, I can't tell. No bearish engulfing, overbought conditions still pre prevail. Um, a little bit of a down day today doesn't mean too much at all. Love to have a bearish engulfing here, which would be extremely encouraging. I'd have to get bearish because of the signal. But I need to have this uh, support line at uh, 2336 broken and closed below, then I think we do have a significant high in overbought conditions. And the downside objective would be in the ballpark of back to these couple of highs back here. That would be a pretty good break. I ain't got it yet. Silver. Doji inside trading range, not too, it's just barely unchanged, a tick or two higher. I haven't got anything besides the overbought, similar to what I said in gold. Next, platinum. It looks a little more convincing because now today is a new low for a while. And that did get very overbought. And it was in a broad, touching barely at the high of the wick, the resistance area, all in one day. It went up, poked at it, and dropped way back down. And we've been going Tierra de Fuego land down south three days, including today afterwards, including today's support level being tested, broken right away, and we're way below it. So now we're over going, okay, down to at least 907 area to, okay, fine, hang on. Uh, this is going to be the bottom of it. This is going to be a, about the high of it leave it there, but I want to go back to here, what I was glancing at. That's it. That's the support area. This zone, we're on our way. 900 to 880, that's it. Next chart. Um, high grade. Still could have, not sure yet, topped out on Monday in resistance, in overbought conditions that were extremely high historically, unheard of high, having met accurate as hell, the minimum upside objective on the head and shoulder top formation, which we measured from the neckline breakdown here and had the shoulder, the head and the shoulder pattern over an 11 month period, <coughs> excuse me, outlined a little late. And that's kind of like my top in the QQQs, um, but it worked. Let's hope the QQQ works. Next chart, and now I think it's stopping out. Next chart is the soybeans, oil, meal, corn, and wheat. 
Then we go to cattle and hogs. So no sign of it bottoming out. New low in price. Yes, we're oversold. Yes, we're getting close to previous lows. Oversold and close to previous lows look like it's trying to at a little lower. I hope it gets closer to those previous lows and stays oversold, which is plausible. Then we're going to bounce. So I'm getting ready for a bounce, but I'm not sure we're there yet. Soybean oil, again, we got the bottom or super close back on March 1. And so far, even with yesterday and today's lows being very, very, very close, uh, we're oversold now. We're close to previous lows. We're in a support area like before when the buy signal occurred. And if we can rally strongly enough, we might get another buy signal right here. Today's low, let me take a quick peek here, is 44.50. Six, where your previous day's low is 44.57. We have the chance because today's low is one tick lower than yesterday's low in oversold conditions. If we have a higher high now before the close, we will have a green bullish engulfing similar to the one that worked so well. No guarantees, of course, on um, March 1st. Very, very interesting. Next chart. Uh, meal. No lower low today. Kind of in a rock and a hard spot. Testing resistance so far. Not doing bad or good. But the important part here is there ha could have been a bottom formation. I don't have it all outlined. The last shoulder is right there a couple of weeks ago. It is just too low to be fairly normal. It should have been a little bit higher. And that matches up with that low. And then you got the bottom with our, of course, bullish engulfing ER buy signal, smack on the low day so far. So are we doing a little bit of a no-no going below this neckline? Or is that not a neckline and only a little bit of a bear trend line and it's not working anyway? I can't tell. I don't have an answer. I have to wait a day or two. Next chart. We got the bottom again. This is corn to the exact date and day, of course. Good rally, not great. Bear market. Got a low in a bear market so far. Is it going to continue so far? I guess. I don't see anything good enough to talk about here except for what's the trend? Duh, down. So um, new lows to the move. It may take a little while. It's not in a hurry. Wheat. We got the damn bottom on a double bottom buy signal. It's unbelievable. Two bullish engulfing ER buy signals back to back. The second one, the lowest low, is the low so far. But like I'm alluding to in corn and the other grains in general, here's a new low for a couple, three weeks. Now, all of a sudden, we're not that far away. Low and last from the lowest low, the whole damn trend. I'm, got, I'm glad we got a low for a while. That's the idea. Uh, as long as it makes money, that's the idea. Some of these are unbelievable. Remember, we caught the October 13th bottom in the stock market and a heck of a lot of stocks. October 13th, 2022, the bottom of that bear market and the beginning of this currently bull market. I'm not bearish, guys. I'm just reactionary in the stock market for another month or two at the most, two months. Next chart, cattle. Got oversold, starting to rally. Not very timely, no signals, not much to go on. Can't say much, except I think it's going to rally more. Maybe back up to this resistance area again. And our hogs. This is legitimate data. Now I do not have a problem telling you that this is good data and the chart is good. And we got a signal to sell short. ER signals, sell signal on the exact high day. It matches with other platforms and the mercantile exchange data. There was a setting that was incorrect on my part. Uh, so we're short from the high day. If you are short, our system default numbers, which are not necessarily the best for uh, lean hogs, but it, got, it made some money, got out yesterday on the rally. And today we're a little bit lower. I'm still basically bearish because there's no sign it's turning around. We're not oversold yet. 
I'm looking for a test of the lows down at 98.60, period. Yeah, that's not, that's not bad. <coughs> Notice we also had a high very close to that same number way back on January 31st. That's going to be it. Hang on. Good. That's my first uh, support. Next chart is ICE. Let's see with the mercantile currencies. Okay. We're bouncing on the E-mini. Uh, not... Okay, we're right, coming right up to some lows yesterday and today, and that seems to be likely spot for it to stop again, and maybe even make a new low before the close of business, or at least stall out right in this area here. Okay, uh, I don't know, 50.77, 50.85. Here's ice, New York. Just a moment. First chart, Arbob. Big down day. New lows for a couple, three weeks. Looks like it may close below those previous lows or at least close to those lows. Nowhere near oversold yet. I think this is the beginning of a move down. We only had one day of overbought conditions before it turned down. So be it. We're already at a little bit of support, nothing special. I think it's going to come down probably to the bottom of this low here we had before. I'm not sure, but I think we are starting to work our way down and I'm going to get more confident about something later. Next chart is coffee. Oh, screaming. Oh my God. Okay. So 247. Um, May futures contract. Overbought at night. Oh, I can't believe her at 96.76. We, I have to say it. I know I've been saying it. I can't stop saying it. We are so close in time, I think. But in price, it could scream another hour, day or so higher. But we should be, should be very, very close today or tomorrow or something like that to a really big correction, maybe the important longer term high. Next. Okay, so here we got orange juice, sideways pendant formation, blah, nothing to say. Next chart, cocoa, I outlined three days into the future. I'm already wrong so far. It's an up day and I thought we might sink another two to three days more in a row. I'll leave these next embarrassing two or three days still on the screen and see what happens. Next, new low, still oversold, sugar, broke support. Looks like it could drop a lot more, but we first should have some sort of rally soon. It's at 11, 11.90 on the RSI. Damn low. No sign of reversing yet. Probably come back up to 1975, maybe up to 2050, and then drop into new low ground again. But I can't rule out lower first and then back up to those numbers. Next, but we're close to having a bottom of sorts, but not a not a big one in sugar. Uh, cotton, uh, extremely oversold again, close to a turning point time-wise. Downside objective on our head and shoulder top, we just pegged great. I saw that one coming in advance of the breakout, breakout test of resistance all the way down. And now I'm trying to give you a date for the bottom for a good rally and I'm very very close so maybe a little lower but not for very long as best I can say uh close back to our Bob you guys have a great day I know I was long-winded 